stand at the And this Yasuka Nakajima. Peter Bowles. Yes. Talk yes. <laughs> 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 to me about actors. Wonderful. I can't really go on any further. Well, he yet. was such an evil <laughs> character. No. character what was he in real? The show. Character. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> Person. Wonderful. <laughs> Gotta make that separation. You know, it made me think when I sat down, I said something about wires. Uh, when we did Mission Impossible ever so long ago, the astronauts came and visited on the set. I have to tell you because I appreciate it. And one of them opened the camera, the big Mitchell camera. <laughs> and he opened it and he looked in, he closed it, and he opened it again. And he turned around and he said, Sprockets? <laughs> we were still pulling film that way. Oh. So a lot has changed is all I've heard when I mentioned about wires. And that wasn't your question. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, Karen? Um, this is for Suzanne. So we know what um, Barbara's schedule would have been like, makeup and mm -hmm. et cetera. But you were on the set for full days. Yes. So we've heard yesterday, yes. like frequently or yes. always. Yes. What were your days like? Did you do makeup? Or did you need no, to? No, 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 no. Did you I was stand just for standing in for lighting. So you stood in for key lighting. Yeah, so I'm going to sit down and let you yeah. talk about your whole day. Okay. <laughs> 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 My whole day was uh, getting a glass of tea or coffee. Uh, I did. <laughs> And, yeah, I did. And, and um, yeah, no, for lighting of the sets, where Barbara, I had to watch Barbara rehearse. Okay. All, all Was that dreadful? No. <laughs> <laughs> and watch all the movements, and that's what I just had to do, really. And did yeah. you do stunt work, or was Well, I'm not on this, I didn't, but I have done. Many years ago, I did, yeah. So no, whenever was, Barbara was on Barbara's set, you would be stunt there. double was... Dorothy Ford, who unfortunately is not with us anymore, but um, she was Barbara Stunt, Stunt on And so were you there all day? All when day. Barbara was there every time? Yes. Every time Barbara was in, I was there. Yeah. Which was nearly every day, wasn't it? Yeah. So occasionally. So, yeah. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was. We used to have a giggle. <laughs> yeah. Barbara used to do a lot of needlepoint, and I did, and and that's it started me off doing needlepoint. I used to do masses of it too. So the two of you would sit together. And no, 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 Barbara, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> 
I scared her away. <laughs> Killing you. <laughs> I don't know who is addressed because I couldn't quite hear you. Uh, no. To me. Yeah. Okay, that's even more serious because I don't know what you have. <laughs> 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 Somebody else might have heard. My yes. question is how did the production company get a hold of two fabulous actors like you and Mr. Landau? How did they get us? Yes. Oh, they came across the pond. <laughs> that's what they called it. And they came to visit us in our home, and then had this extraordinary proposition of coming to London to make this series. And they described it, described what they were doing, and told us about Thunderbirds, which we did not grow up in, uh, as you well know, or pretty much do know. Uh, and it was intriguing. So they came to visit us, and we talked about all the different elements. They talked about the concept. They talked about what the characters would be like. And, you know, we became quite intrigued and had any number of discussion, and that's how it happened. Then all the business folks did whatever they do, which is very exciting. And uh, <laughs> we, we planned suddenly to be in another country to take our kids with us, which for some reason the British folks found it really weird. Why do you your children? <laughs> right? We were supposed to leave at home to go to school or something. And uh, that we made, we made, it was an adventure. And the project seemed very, very intriguing. That's how we got there. Yeah? Uh, this is for Suzanne and Yasko. Um, what was your initial involvement? How did you uh, get hired or hear about it? Okay. Oh, go ahead, Yasko. <laughs> well, uh, I, uh, I went to England from Japan. And then I never intended to become an actress. I wanted to, because uh, I studied English literature at University of Tokyo, so I wanted to go to England to further the, the, the study of English <coughs> literature. And then that I never even thought that I was going to become an actress. So then it just happened, and then I was cast in some movie, and then I was very honest to the, the, the producer and the, the director of the, the feature film, I said, I never acted in my life. <laughs> and then, I don't think I can do things. And then they told me kindly, said that, don't worry, we will teach you everything. Just uh, very Japanese, great kimono. And then that's how I started the career. So I had no idea I would be eventually going to be a one of the regulars of the, the series like Space 1999. But then while I was working in this other project, and then I met a few people, and then that, uh, somebody mentioned about Jerry and Sylvia's project over Thunderbird. And then I was, I was watching Thunderbird that, 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 uh, myself, and then they told me, they're making this series it's at Slough. So I went to Slough to, to, to see how they are making it. And that's how I met Jerry and Sylvia. And then for some reason they liked me. And then that's how I got involved in this series. But as I said to everybody, you know, I was never a professional actress like Barbara or Nick or anybody. So I happened to be in this series, which I never even knew it was going to be become a big, big, famous series. So I really have very, very little recollection of how I did the, the work. <laughs> but that's how I started getting involved with this series. And I'm really, as I said to yesterday, I was really grateful because uh, Jerry and Sylvia was very, very kind to me. And Jerry was like my father in a way. So that was my experience in Space 1959.
And me? Well, um, <laughs> the um, assistant rang, assistant director, second assistant director rang me and said, was, was I interested in doing this series? And, um, and I said, of course, because I had a little boy and I needed to have regular work. So I said, yes, I would. And, uh, and that's how I got mine. Good to know the second assistant. Yes, it is. <laughs> Barbara, yeah. would you approach the character of Helena Russell differently now than you did 40 years ago? Oh, that's a great question. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine, yes, you have to. The eyes are really accumulated in the purpose amount of life experience by now, which would color anything I do. So, yes, but how different, how it would manifest, and what the specific thoughts about it might be, uh, I haven't had, so I'd have to wait a while to consider how I might approach it. But yes, of course, everything would be affected. I, uh, when you play something when you're very young, it has that kind of coloration to it. Of course, she would be older too, wouldn't she? Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> there go, it would work. <laughs> okay, that's the best I can answer that. <laughs> This is for Suzanne. You mentioned to me yesterday that you were the stunt double for Lisa Harrowin Star Main. I did. My yes. first question is, which set did you like better? Oh, on Star Main? Which set of well, the two did you like better? Oh, I preferred uh, Space 1999. Yay! My second question is, do you know my chance offhand? If some of the props used on Space Thought Annie and I were also used on Star Maidens. I, oh. I don't I don't know to be quite honest with you. Okay. Star, um, Star Maidens was a very, very inexpensive production and it was done at Grey Studios. And it, it which is a good, which was a lovely little studio, but Space was a much bigger production and it was at Pinewood. Yeah, with the two L and M stage. Yeah, because I know in Star Bands they used the season two music as well as the same sound sound effects. Oh, I know really? that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Was Star Agent? Star Agent. Yeah. Star. Yeah, Keith Wilson. Oh, yeah. But the sets were very. Fiasco. Yes. Um, you worked on another Jerry Anderson series, The Protectors. Protectors, uh, yes. And one of my favourite actors over the years has been Robert Vaughan. I wonder Mine if you could too. talk a little bit about working with Robert and what was that like? See, as uh, when I was uh, still living in Japan, I was a big fan of Man From Uncle. Yeah. So when I had an opportunity to be able to work with Robert Vaughan, I was so excited. <laughs> and then, of course, I saw uh, that the Magnificent Seven as well, and he played that, that, you know, Magnificent Seven was an original Japanese movie. So while I was working with him, I kept asking so many questions, how to work with uh, that, that, you know, that, that the Japanese director, and, and uh, you know, the interpretation of Yobrina, and all that thing. And Robert was so kind again, and then it was uh, really, really, I, I had few, very fond memory of working for that, that series, which didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. But uh, Robert Bond was a very, very wonderful, sweet, kind man. He was really, and I was very sad when he passed away not too long ago. But I had very good memory. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's another question to Yasko. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask, wasn't it a bit frustrating because most of your part in Space 99 was manipulating the, the controls and saying, oh, sorry, Commander, I can't. 
First of all, when I arrived in England, I hardly spoke English, although I studied English literature because it was reading and writing, mm -hmm. but speaking the language is totally different. So I was desperate to, when I, whenever I, I, I was given the script, I tried to pronounce correctly. <laughs> and then all the things I had to, to, to do is to do with the technical things, which made it so difficult <laughs> to memorize the line. <laughs> so that's the reason why when I was watching you, Barbara, and Martin, and all the other people, you people, very good actress and actors, <laughs> and then I am there so that I hardly spoke the language properly, so it was very difficult, but again, people uh, were so, so helpful and kind to me, and then I was very good friend, became a very good friend with the, 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 the set uh, designer, Keith Wilson, and Keith was a big help as well, and then out of the studio, Barbara and Martin was living in the area called Little yeah. Venice, the same street. They had a house, and I had the, the, the condominium flat in the same street. And Barbara, <coughs> you were so kind to me, and my daughter, Mickey. Yes. <laughs> and so that was, so you know, at the end, that it wasn't those That's where you learned your English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I learned what, what Ribino. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and uh, so you're very correct. Those language and the line I had to deliver in the book, nothing to do with my day-to-day -day life. So you know, with Barbara, I could talk properly the day-to-day the -day life. But at the studio, I was always so tense, <laughs> trying to not to, to uh, make a mistake of uh, the, the pronunciation and all this technical work. But uh, I, you know, after all, people were so nice, and then the whole whole people, uh, especially because I had lots of in the same scene with Tony. So and then of course with Tony, he was in the protectors as well. So with Tony, I could. Say, 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 why do I have to deliver this line? <laughs> <laughs> we had to be really careful not to sound like we we're Brits, <laughs> because both Martin and I have kind of that kind of an ear where we're used to kind of picking up sounds, and they wanted us very specifically to remain American. <laughs> so it was hard not to pick up sounds yes. on the set as well, you know, with everybody speaking that other language. <laughs> <laughs> call the original language. Uh, yeah. So we had that problem, which was on the other side of it. On the other side. Yeah. See, so it's kind yes, of interesting. Yeah. A couple and of years you, yeah, later, yeah. Uh, the same thing like you are just explaining. I had a chance to do some French television drama series. And then for that, I was cast as uh, the, the war orphan from uh, the, 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 the Vietnam. And then the, 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 the producers and director and everybody said, you know, we are not going to uh, voice over the French dialogue. And then you have to speak <laughs> French. Because <laughs> 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 I suffer from the, the language problem. <laughs> I, mean, I, just, I didn't speak a word of French at all. <laughs> and then they said, well, sorry, you've got to deliver these lines in French. And then it was a very important part of the whole series. And then I was really, and then, and then the director of that show said that, I don't mind you having an you know, accent at all, so don't worry. We will you know, teach you how to say these lines. And then at the end, the director said, you know, Yasko, I said, I don't mind you having an accent, and I would love to have, because you're supposed to be Vietnamese, so you should have an accent, but the trouble is, you don't have a Vietnamese accent, and you don't have an Asian, you have an English accent. <laughs> Delivering the line with, uh, with, with the French. <laughs> 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 but, uh, 
That's exactly so I yeah. know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, this is for Barbara. Um, I'm curious, I have a two-part question. Did you have an influence, so your hairstyle for the series, did you work with the hairdresser on what you wanted or did they tell you what you were gonna have? And the second part, all right, the zipper on the uniform, is was that so that you could get the tunic on without messing up your hair? <laughs> question of my hair. Whenever you design anything for film, it has to be designed, particularly when the kind of wig we were shooting in those days, a little more haphazard now, because the matching thing isn't as critical as it is now for some reason. And most of the hair, if you notice on women, is all anyway. It was very, very particular. You could see if it didn't match. So it's always good to, if it's a period dress or whatever, they take all the buttons off and Velcro it, but you still have the buttons. Because otherwise you're in the dressing room with something called a button hook, trying to button up 175 buttons <laughs> while they're waiting. And yes, it's authentic, thank you very much. But they don't like waiting very much, so they're not only waiting, they're yelling. <laughs> the wardrobe person, or you, or somebody. Uh, so it's always good to have a way to get into it. But that was not how they were designed, uh, particularly. Um, Rudy just had that idea of that industrial zipper down the sleeve. But so the, you I, did use that to. Pardon me? Up. You did use the zipper. It was, to open it it up. was uh, yes, it did work. Okay. It also, I think, mentioned yesterday, it was very cold yeah. <laughs> in the morning in London to put on a piece of metal right on your arm. <laughs> so we put it on the radiator. <laughs> and then, anyway, you find a way to get that onto him. Uh, that was Rudy. In her, oh, my hair. Well, you know, that was interesting. No, they did not have a concept. We did not, nobody had, we couldn't figure out what to do. Well, if one would think of it today, you know, you cut the sides off and have a big thing sticking up in the middle, <laughs> which will also pass. I don't know how common it is anywhere here on the East Coast, but every single person walking down, man, oh no, some of the women. Walking down the street in Los Angeles at the moment, have the size of their heads shaved, right. mm -hmm. and the center. There's some a couple people here I saw like that. Uh, that'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, Same so we, one didn't know. They didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't know quite what to do. And it's kind of a in the middle kind of idea for hair. It is, there's nothing startling about it. It was something uh, that could be done. Uh, it wasn't actually a statement of any kind because actually no one could figure it out what to do and certainly I, I would no help any more than the hairdresser. <laughs> we were struggling while trying to make something that worked that she could do every day. Mm. That's the best that it turned out to be. Well, right. Barbara, your hair was always perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I didn't do that. <laughs> she did that. She was the, oh. I, Oh, no, one doesn't know one's own hair. Why would one do one? <laughs> well, then there's somebody in charge of your hair. Because their responsibility is yeah. to, to match it in every shot and watch it. Yeah. So otherwise, you're having trouble editing it. So given that, you know, it's yeah. her hair. Yeah. My hair's been somebody else's hair for most of my life. But I'm just getting used to the fact that it's mine, even though I'm still working and it's somebody else's. So it's kind of a, an odd situation when you're working in film. In theater, we used to do all our own stuff, and now they have people backstage doing makeup and hair. We, we did it ourselves. So we were taught how to do stage makeup. And the film makeup, to this day, the people who do it are true artists. Because I'm not bad at it, but I have a good eye, but I don't have a great hand. You need both. No. And I, I value it what they do enormously. So, so there. <laughs> I give them enormous credit for their work and care about it. So, yeah, I can take no credit for that, either how it showed up genetically or how it was done. I'm like, I have nothing to do with any of it. <laughs> I just lucked out. Let's put it that way. Yeah? Uh, I just have a question to the, to the zipper. You had the zipper directly on your arm. Did yes. you get rashes? No. Okay. <laughs> well, there are very few things I get rashes to. Moving Couple around of them politically. The 
Only now I can cover it in red. Yes, I'm not even allergic to poison ivy. I did a film with Charlton Heston a couple of years ago and had a baby before he died, of course. And there I was walking up this hill with Moses. <laughs> Never mind all my training. I was still walking up the hill with Moses. <laughs> and the entire crew got poison ivy, except me. I never had gotten it since I was a kid. I could always roll around in anything and show up without anything. So that was really good. Who knows about tomorrow? <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> I'm not sure what the protocol is here, but uh -huh. <laughs> I, guess, I guess can ask a question. <laughs> yeah. I guess. But uh, Barbara, I've just done a session before you came. Yes, in, which I had to miss. Yeah. Oh. Um, but one of the things that we were talking about uh, was just how much of an input uh, you and Martin had on the scripts, and I told people so uh, about uh, how uh, at the end of shooting. I would come back to your house in Little Venice and uh, we would spend the next two or three hours uh, just going through the scripts, listening to what you and Martin had to say and what a huge contribution you both made. So I think they would very much like to hear that from you. Well, before I got into any of that, we should applaud that gentleman because without him... <laughs> a gate for words to say and wondering how to make any of this work. So, yeah, we had to spend some time because as I recall, Mr. Penworthy, um, <laughs> what a great name for a writer. I knew I was crazy about before I met you because of that name. But given that, you were a baby boy just out of, what, Cambridge? <laughs> right? Nor you just out of Cambridge? About four and a half minutes out of school. <laughs> <laughs> and we were at least ten years out of school, so we were like, really. Never, and we'd had some experience in American television. And of course, we had, you, you came with this classic, strong, wonderful way to write, which we no longer apply to television. Because <laughs> television blitzed everything apart <coughs> because of commercials. Television isn't a dramatic medium, it's a, a product seller, mm -hmm. primarily, certainly in America, and you had, I don't, even less now, I forget how many minutes per segment between a commercial, but an hour television at the time, I think, was 48 minutes, some number, mm -hmm. I know, I'm not good at that, but certainly not an hour, because every so often, so we had to kind of mention that to you, <laughs> which was arrogant, to tell a writer who knew how to write a beautifully classic build to a dramatic denouement, and there we are, you know, oh, what's going to happen, oh, and the resolve, which is, well, Christopher, certainly the heritage of an English literature, talking about a person who knew how to do that, but it was not applicable to this crazy thing called television, and I kept, we kept having to tell me, you need a climax, so pardon me, about every six minutes, and a really big one for the act breaks all the time, because they're going to go to the loo, and they're going to eat their potato chips, and that was alien to you, I think, or certainly the American form was. I don't know, because even on the beep at the time, if the, if the thing needed longer, it ran over the hour. Can you imagine? Can you imagine sitting in your, if you, any of you Americans in this room, sitting in a television and it not stopping right, yeah, right. at the end of the hour? But we have more story to tell, so we go another 10 minutes. I don't know if that's still happening there, but it was a messy way to run television if you were to sell cigarettes. So, uh, I think that was the only thing that was structurally we needed to somehow tell you to wreck. Your, your beautiful understanding of a true drama. No, you, you, you both taught me more than, more than I knew about the process of Pardon me? You both taught me more than I ever knew about the process of script editing. Script editing. <laughs> well, that's but, uh, amazing. Made a big uh, takedown, uh, just to uh, pick up on what you were saying, uh, that um, uh, floored me at the time. 
uh, was um, a statement uh, from uh, someone in ITV who said, um, the function of television drama is to deliver the audience to the advertiser. Oh my God. <laughs> to deliver the audience to the yeah. advertiser. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, people would say something in the other about television and I'd say, yeah, I know, I sell cigarettes. <laughs> but I, in between it, I do the best I can, can do with what I'm given to do, my part of it. But basically, yeah, that's what the medium is. It is a selling, once, once it occurred to the advertiser that this extraordinary thing called television could sell product, well, same thing with the internet. The minute you find a way to sell something, we all know what has happened. And we are the buyers of anything they tell us. Even when you're trying to resist it, you can't. When you hear the name of a product over and over and you're in a shelf of things, you automatically reach for it even though you didn't even want it half the time or need or you need, you may want it, but that particular brand has, you know, gotten into your brain enough. So so it was a form, it was an interesting the question of structure mostly as I recall. Because the other thing, you know, to me to see you is just heaven and think of all that time. And think of that baby boy who just came out of school and look at him. <laughs> now, you know, hey, we're still here to tell the tale. <laughs>
call it underprivileged area, whatever, but that's where I was, for about 15 years. It's morphed into an online program. There's something like 4 million something hits. Wow. I think wow. Day. I have to look that up. They're beside themselves. It's called Storyline Online. You got any little kids, medium sized kids, or giant grown up kids, turn on Story Online on, on the thing and you'll get a story read to you by any number of actors that you might have liked in your life. Read you a story. What's so terrible? So anyway, that's where the teacher ended up anyway. So probably I would have sort of stayed somewhere in there. So I have the same question to the other panelists. Sorry? I, I, it was for everybody. It was for everybody. Also. Oh, yes. But I think you did. Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, did you save the world? Maybe it was you. Yeah. I'm <laughs> Someone had to. Yeah. Still has to. Right? Um, yeah. Well, what I did, what I started doing, was I was a photographic model. I used to do commercials and things like that. Then I, with doing that, I used to do like specials on different films. Then I got into standing in and doubling. And then I left it and I got married again and I moved to New York and I didn't know what to do. So I trained to be an interior decorator and that is what I do now, but trying to retire. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's what I do now, I'm an interior decorator. And I go all over, I go to Europe and I go all over England and everything. But I'm getting a bit tired now, so I think I'm gonna take a step back. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I've been doing most of my life. <laughs> so as I already mentioned so many times, I was never uh, that I, I would be a, an, an actress. And I was more interested all the time, even when I was working for Space 1999, I was more interested behind the camera, not in front of the camera. So when um, I married, and then that, was that the, one of the directors of Space 1999, and then because of him, uh, we moved to Los Angeles. And then, by then, I started working as a uh, I was always interested in photography, so I started becoming the producer of the photo production, not the movie or commercial or anything, but photography production. And then that, that, that's what I pursued as soon as I arrived in LA, because to tell you the truth, uh, I met you uh, at that, that car rental place, do you remember? One day of uh, the new girls. <laughs> Yeah, and then, and then and that was because I was renting the car yeah, yeah. for the production for the, 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 the client and then I met you and then I was in the middle of the product, production already. The moment I hit America, I started and then because my ex-husband Ray Austin was uh, was produced uh, that the directing lots of the TV series, so I was always going along. I, I didn't them. teach you to drive on the right side. Uh -huh. of the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then so I had a connection in the film industry and the location, and I was always always interested in location. So eventually, apart from being the producer for the photo production, I started the location company, the scout location for the for the advertising. You know, magazine shoots, everything, and then that led to many times uh, to find a location for certain directors, movie directors as well. Although I didn't have a, I never have a the, the union <coughs> card, but I gave lots of time <laughs> 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 quite a well known directors and then that, that they made a movie <coughs> that my suggested location. And then I was very, very happy that I could do it. But I had lots of wonderful experience as a photo production producer. And then that uh, 40 years, that's what I have been doing. And then I just retired myself three years ago. But I still have a couple of really, really uh, that, uh, that, uh, good friends, uh, who, which are uh, the clients who became my friends as well. So these productions, I'm still doing it. But uh, I'm in retirement, but, uh, so if I ever 
reborn again. <laughs> I rather be uh, the producer, rather to do that because I really enjoyed what I've been doing for the last 40 years. Oh, thank so. you. <laughs> uh, this is for Barbara. Um, the show like Space 1999, you had a lot of merchandising, like dolls and action figures, games, lunchboxes. Your two daughters, what did they think? Did they think it was really cool that their parents had <laughs> <laughs> lunchbox or they were dolls? Did they, did they see the stuff in the store? Did they think it was cool or did they think it was weird? First of all, you'd have to ask them. <laughs> They're very opinionated and firm, always. So I cannot not speak for such other people than myself. It was, in a certain way, my older daughter thought everybody was on their own television set. We were just a piece of the furniture. <laughs> She'd go to, though a lot of our friends were also on television, so we'd go and watch Dick Van Dyke's show together. We'd watch Carl's show. We'd watch each other's shows on the night it aired because they didn't screen them ahead of time, so we'd see them in each other's homes. So when they go to somebody else's house, they just expect that mom and daddy are on the television. <laughs> Absolutely no attention to it whatsoever. Uh, things like the lunchbox showed up. That was pretty funny. Other kids in the school had mom and daddy. <laughs> That's so weird. That's kind of weird. Uh, uh, they ultimately, I, I don't know what they thought, but it must have been bizarre. Let's put it that way. Uh, last night I saw some, I've never seen a, a Halloween costume yeah. with a mask, mm -hmm. supposedly of me. <laughs> Anyway, I never saw the costume inside. I was assigned the box. The box was pristine from its time. I never saw it in its time. I can't imagine uh, them thinking, okay, let's, let me put on Mama or Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> we did have one when we were shooting Mission and they were really little. We were in the makeup room, very, it makes me think of Halloween. See, my mind just goes like that. But getting, anyway, uh, it was Halloween and I had to call and say they were really small. I said we had to be late because Daddy was still in makeup. And my kid, my older child, who caught me right away and said, but it's Halloween. <laughs> Why can't we come now? And I said, because Daddy's playing someone that wouldn't be a big hit in the makeup. <laughs> So those kinds of things happen that are fairly, and I think I mentioned yesterday, again, not just the merchandising, my older daughter was that kind of budding tween, I would call it now, right? Uh, we were shooting the, somebody knows the name of the uh, episode when I played a cave woman. Yes. Full circle. What's it called? Full circle. Full circle. Right, okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I was a cave woman, right? I didn't take the, they, I took the costume off and left it at the studio, but I still was all done up here. And she brought a first boyfriend home. <laughs> and I didn't know she was, or I probably would have done something. Or something. And Mama, this is, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we have a giggle now, but that's not good. <laughs> so, even though one of the reasons I actually went and told my kids so it opens up a whole thing, I went and decided to go across the pond and do this incredible thing uh, because we've only shot till 5.20 every night, unless there was an extra 20 minutes, which meant I was home with my kids every night for dinner. Well, you don't do that with an American television show. You're working way until midnight, who cares when? It's a 12-hour day, and it just keeps going. Uh, and I don't know that they wanted to see me, but I, I didn't want to miss them during those years. So that worked. Here I was, shooting fully, working on a television series at home for dinner every night. It was heaven, that part, certainly, and many other parts as well. But I cannot begin to explain their experience. I did not grow up with people whose faces were all over the place. So I don't know. That must be us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I somebody here showed me earrings. They had a picture of me on. 
And I thought, okay. <laughs> I mean, it is, all of it's kind of wondrous and strange and different for each person. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Be a kid. Yeah, this question is for Suzanne. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious as a stand-in, did, did you have to learn a script to, no. so they would just say, no, I would be hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> I would be hopeless. No, all I had to do, literally, is watch the rehearsals and where, what Barbara did and how she did her turns. And, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so I was just kind of like doing that. So you had to like learn the script by watching Barbara. I yeah, but I never. I'm no good at doing anything oh, well. like that. I was never. I never ever was an actress. Mm. I just was just used to double and things like that. It was just. I really started out as a photographic model. That's that's what I started out. But um, then I just got one job after the other, really. And then I married. And that was it. That's history. <laughs> <laughs> Got a question. Uh, when Martin Landau went to do the X Files, did he call you to tell you, "Hey, look at me tonight on TV"? Well, it all brings back memories. Well, I know, but I guess Jack and, well, sure. You know, it, there's no question. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a person sitting around looking at anything from the past, baby pictures or anything. I'm very very connected to what I'm doing at the moment. So even before coming here, I, I turned on the, the site that tells about this convention and watched a piece of Breakaway and went, oh, Jesus, we did that really. That was damn good. <laughs> Just everything, everything here. I can't tell you anything different. Just seeing people, just hearing words, hearing the names of episodes, considering that huge standing set we were in, which is amazing. Thinking of some of the people that aren't here. Uh, yeah, I haven't done any of that <laughs> in a very long time because I am exceedingly connected to what I'm doing. As I said yesterday, I'm in Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I didn't know where I was. Um, I don't. I can't answer you in any okay. real way other than yes, all of it. Okay. I, I haven't had that zipper up my sleeves because I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, will let, I will give him that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I will let him know. He's, he's a huge fan. He's down in Miami. Boy. Yes. Yes. Well, say hello. <laughs> but I, I really, you know, it's just all of it. It's kind of stunning. When I think that what I was involved in, and we were involved in so long ago, really, by a human count. We don't live dog years, do we? <laughs> no. uh, Thank God. Uh, and yet it's a minute, and yet that it still has resonance. It's fascinating to me. It's fascinating. And, and, and getting to know so many people that are here that have become <coughs> connected through this show and connected to each other, which is something it, it's very moving to me, and I found that out. I didn't know that. I didn't know any of that. that. There's a whole bunch of people who keep track of each other because of this show and know when they were ill and what this happened or that happened. Well, that's just phenomenal. All of it. Yeah. Well, my other question is, at the time the show was being filmed, did you like sci-fi, science fiction? Is this question for all of you. What was it was science Did you science like sci-fi, science fiction? Oh, fiction. And you yeah. thought it was, well, maybe if I'm in this show, it's going to be big, or maybe it's not going to be big. No, no. <laughs> Did I like science fiction? Yes, like at the time you were filming uh, Space yeah, Night. I, you know, I enjoyed working on the series. It was, it was good. I wouldn't say that I'm a science fiction fan. <laughs> I love really old movies, and, yeah. you know, I mean, this is really good. This, uh, the other evening, I, I went over to, to a friend's um, daughter's house, 
and her partner was watching space. I can't believe it. <laughs> and he was watching us. I don't know what episode it was. And it was so clear. It looked as if it was made yesterday. You said, I did only just see this. That is unbelievable. Yeah. It looks so. It looks it's so good. modern yeah. it's now. Good. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And yeah, I used to watch. I mean, I I don't sit down and watch science fiction films. My son, when he was a little boy, he's always followed this series. Even now, he loves it. He, he likes. It. He, he saw you in the show too. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Oh, we used to. He was a little boy. He used to come down. Oh yeah. He was little. He's fifty now. <laughs> <laughs> fiction love, love at all. I was more interested in the detective story. Oh, oh, that's I my, like that. and then even now, each time I fly, I buy Michael Connery's detective oh, I love story, Michael. Lincoln Lawyer and Harry Bosch, yeah. and also yeah. I'm a big fan of oh, like Lee Child, and that's I read on the plane. Yeah. So I was never but then so I happened to be given the part, and I try to understand what science fiction is. I still <laughs> <laughs> so, Well, I was not a science fiction fan, in essence. Though Star Trek was shot right next to, pardon the expression, Star Trek, next door to Mission. And we would go in and see, we saw the day that Freddie Phillips put the makeup and I put the ears on. <laughs> we thought it was hysterical. <laughs> Green paint. Anyway, given that, I, I was very, very immersed in European literature primarily. Uh, I read every novel ever written by anybody who ever put a pen to paper. <laughs> I was a, a literally a, just a re I'm still a reader, 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 reader. But I knew about Ray Bradbury, you had to. I uh, actually met him and uh, some very interesting people. I thought the conceptual things about science fiction were kind of fascinated, fascinating rather. The idea certainly is that you know, I could go to the moon, don't be so. <laughs> uh, all of those things until it became a reality, uh, some parts of it. And some of the thinking is fascinating. So it was a slow growth. It wasn't an immediate love. What was interesting to me when I met with them was their idea of it all, and then I began to get more connected to it. But it wasn't that I was running to see any science fiction movies, if there were some, which you guys would know better than I, I would. Uh, or actually any, I wasn't even a movie fan. I ended up doing them. I was not a movie person. I was much more a theater person and a book person. That were these big, thick, serious books, you know. Uh, that's what I read. Uh, until I got engaged in it. Then, then, of course, when I started seeing the way this was done, we didn't see any of those effects because we would be acting to a blank, blank screen. That, it was just a blank screen. Oh my God, what was coming toward us. And <laughs> <laughs> we had to make it up, and then over at Bray, they'd make up this stuff. And they were talking about some kind of, I can't even think of the word when they were using. Fiber optics. Oh, yeah. 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 What's that? <laughs> I mean, I have no knowledge of the, in essence, not only the science fiction world, the physical world. If there's anything that says on, off, and I touch it, it breaks. <laughs> so I'm not good at any of that stuff. It's not native to me at all. I have, and so I, I walk on bed. I mean, I still don't know why the camera works. I spent half my life in front of a camera. <laughs> my granddaughter, on the other hand, who's 10 now, a picture would be taken in her house of hers. It would be sent to me on my computer. It would print out as she walked in the door when I was driving her to school. <laughs> and she thought that was OK. <laughs> we had to take it to the drugstore and wait for 10 days. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you got the right ones back. <laughs> Not somebody else's. How many red eyes were in there? <laughs> you know, all that experience was totally different. The connection to doing it and seeing it was a very different kind of Same thing with film. Uh, you waited the next day to see the rushes or the daily, and you could see what you did the day before. So oddly enough, functioning in that um, 
turf. You were always in a today, yesterday, tomorrow kind of time thing. It's, the new script was coming. You were seeing what you did the day before. It was related to the other script. And now you're, you're working on today. So you were always kind of juggling those images. It's kind of interesting mm -hmm. and odd. Fun experience that you have to have a certain kind of crazy brain brain to enjoy. But uh, so I'll, I'm answering your question about science fiction. Those things themselves became kind of science fiction to me, <laughs> including her walking in and thinking it's okay that a picture's right there. <laughs> and not even paying any attention to it. Like, it just, never mind. <laughs> We have time for one more question. Ooh. So, um, what inspires all of you? People, places, what, what are your inspirations? All of you. All of you. All of our inspirations. Well, good grief, everything for me. I'm, yeah. one of those, I'm still a kid going, oh, look at that tree over there. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I still have that wonder yeah. and awe and excitement about almost everything. If I could just pare it down, it would be better. Uh, I don't know. That's hard to explain. Joy in life. I, kind of, I think a genetic predisposition, probably from my father. I think it's genetic, by the way, that I'm, I, you know, that empty glass or half, whatever is in the glass, mm -hmm. half full. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad there's something in the glass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what occurred to me to complain about? It. So that's, I don't know how to explain. One's inspiration comes out of one's own nature, I think, more than the well, specific. That's a wonderful answer, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the same. I mean, I really, I get excited about things, what's going on in the world. Not at the moment, but... Uh, <laughs> Not this we've got country. problems in uh, England than you've got here. Yeah. Yeah. We have different yeah. problems. But it's a singular matter. It is a singular matter. We have a lot of different yeah. problems. <laughs> but, no, really. I mean, I just, just love, I don't know, I just love life. Yeah. Yeah. I love life. I love spending my time with my with my son, and I'm going to be a granny for the first Ooh, time. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I thought he would never have children, <laughs> and now I'm going to be a granny. I'm just <clears throat> so excited. So. Well, uh, inspiration. I mean, everybody knows how old I am. So I am 76 years old. Oh, and I'm oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm still the oldest person in the world. <laughs> even at the age of 76, every day I'm learning something new. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Every day. So to me, learning yeah. to live, and then I don't, I don't know how long more, but every day. It is a new experience for me, yeah. especially at coming to this place. <laughs> it was a total, total new lesson to me because I didn't know the space 1999 has so much big follower in yeah. my life until I arrived here. And then also when Roy contacted me to attend this place, and then I found that <laughs> because one of my big hobby I have now is uh, collecting the mid-century furniture. And then oh. that the Pennsylvania oh. is, uh, is uh, yes. the state of Paul Evans, <laughs> that, that the furniture designer of mid-century. And I, I collect lots of his furniture. So when I found out from Roy that he's going to be in Pennsylvania, the first thing it occurred to me was Paul Evans. That's so <laughs> Because uh, 
when I was young, as you could tell, I wasn't aware of anything. <laughs> but now, at, the, at this age, I realize how valuable it is to be alive so that I learn everything, something, every day about people, about the place. And then one of the biggest passion is before I die, I like to go all over the world. I already did cover lots of places to visit because of my, my job as a producer. Mm -hmm. We did lots of shoot in, in China, <laughs> Russia, all these places with somebody else's expenses. <laughs> <laughs> I know almost all the countries wow. because I did lots of production in Asia too. And then that, uh, so my last one I want to do before I go is to go to uh, to see the my bunch of penguins. <laughs> <laughs> South Pole. You better so, get there because they're waiting for you. <laughs> Thank you.